New York. Who would have thought those words coming from a federal marshal with a nine millimeter on one hip and a German shepherd on the other would elicit the biggest tension breaking hug and kiss I ever got from my ex woman JFK Airport at the end of our first anniversary vacation. <laughs> the year was 1991 where we were still young enough to not even think about trips around the world and just get excited about trips around the Caribbean. But what better place to start than Jamaica? We knew all about Jamaica. To get its food right here in New York. To get its music right here in New York. To get its rum right here in New York. So why not go to the source? And while we're on the plane to Jamaica, it dawned on us. Marijuana. <laughs> Now, neither my wife nor myself are smokers, but we're like, if you're going to the magical, mythical land of marijuana, you gotta try it, right? You gotta try it. It's like being in Amsterdam and not going to the red light district. So, after we boldly took three days to work up our courage, we finally went to the concierge, and in our coolest voice, I did the speaking. <laughs> Excuse me, brother. But do you know where we could get some ganja? <laughs> Because we knew that's what they called it in Jamaica. So he told us, well, your best bet is to catch the bus to Kingston in the drive with your direction. Bet. So we catch the bus. Which really wasn't a bus. It was more like a hybrid between a flatbed truck and some other vehicle with no windows and walls. And everybody crammed in together, holding on for their life. Weaving in and out of traffic, roadway on one side, ocean on the other side. But that didn't please us. What really got us shook was being surrounded by all the European tourists and dreadlock wigs. That was scary. <laughs> sure enough. But we get to Kingston, and we discreetly wait for everybody to get off the bus before we met our move. So I walk up to the driver and get in that cool approach. Excuse me, brother. Do you know where we can get some ganja? And he said to me, hold on, see them there? And points to an alleyway. So we both, we're from Brooklyn, we walked to the alleyway go down a flight of steps to a courtyard that was filled with mismatched chairs and milk crates occupied by Rastafarians of all ages. So I calmly and boldly walked up to the oldest Rastafarian because I knew that something jumped off. I could take it. <laughs> My man, do you have any ganja? I don't know how I always say ganja like that, like I'm asking the question, but ganja. So he reaches into his knapsack and pulls out a big oil ball, almost the size of an eight ball off a pool table. Now, savvy New York was always haggling, but we were so excited, whatever he asked for, we gave it to him. And as we were leaving the courtyard, all of a sudden, the theme from cops just started playing in my head. Like, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Right? So we get back to the hotel, we have a nice evening plan, some dinner, some dancing. My ex-wife, she had a nice floral tropical print outfit, and I had on some nice matching white linen short set. So before we leave, we rolled up. Now, I was an expert roller because I used to practice a lot with my mother's ear rolling um, curler paper and Lipton's teeth. I could roll like a bandit. This is true, too. I could roll like a bandit. So I rolled up a nice little joint, took two puffs, gave it to my ex. She took two puffs, and then we went out night over town. Later that night, we come back to the hotel. We're sitting poolside. The night was pitch black, no stars in the sky. The fluorescent lights around the pool made the pool water look jet black. The concrete was stark white. My tan under the fluorescence looked jet black. The white linen suit was stark white. And then I had a revelation. I said, wow. My ex said, what? And I said, I'm in a black and white polo out. <laughs> so for the next hour and a half, the giggles ensued, the giz giggles ensued, and somehow or another we wound up in the room. It's the next morning. Still had half that joint. Took two puffs, gave her two puffs, went outside. All-inclusive vacation, so drinks are free. Start drinking in the bar room at 11 a.m. They have a beachfront grill. Never seen the blue sky so blue before, the sun so yellow before, and that white styrofoam with the red ketchup on the golden fries. Good Lord, it was like panoramic sound. Yeah, <laughs> whatever that means. So later that night, when we're packing up to go home, the argument ensues. Steph, we gotta bring this back home. Me, now we can't do that, Steph. 
come on, this is the best stuff we ever came across. Yeah, but we don't even smoke. Yeah, but my sisters do. We can sell it to them. Yeah. Say, so we can't bring it home. We can put it in our suitcase. No, step. We can put it in our sneakers. No, step. We can open up the bottle of rum and stick it in the rum. It's in foil. No, step. Big argument. And then the wife pulls the trump card. You know what women do? Silent treatment. Silent from the cab to the airport, silent in the in the tarmac waiting for the plane, silent on the plane, but the tension is so thick you can cut it with the knife until we land. Welcome to Jamaica. The words from the federal marshal with a nine millimeter hip on this hip, a nine millimeter gun on this hip, and the German shepherd on the other, elicited the biggest tension breaking kiss and hug I ever got from my ex-wife, but she reflected on what we left behind in Jamaica.